watching West Dakota Fox News at 9 with Anna Schleisman and meteorologist Henry Blakes. Your first news of the night starts right now on West Dakota Fox News at 9. Probably with a tractor with high clearance, I'll be able to drive in maybe and assess the damage and see what the first step will be. The floodwaters near Fairview are starting to recede, so residents are trying to get to their homes. Some say the land designed to keep the water out of farms and rural neighborhoods is now keeping the water inside those areas. The Schlothauers say cleaning up their farm is going to be a challenge since they didn't get much warning for this flood. We didn't have that much warning for this flood, so uh, we will be finding tires, wood, lawn furniture, Christmas decorations, kids' toys, tires, propane tanks, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Their septic tank cover floated a quarter of a mile from their yard. And communities and emergency management have been rallying to help those affected by the floods. The American Red Cross is opening a multi-agency resource center from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. tomorrow at the Fairview Fire Department. They'll provide cleanup kits as well as information about financial assistance and other disaster relief. Visit redcross.org for more information. Well, I'm happy to finally hear some good news about river levels. Will that continue, Henry? Yeah, eventually it will. Things are slowly getting better, but as time goes by we'll still have to watch out for some of those rivers for some increase but for the time being the cold front has pushed through North Dakota and pushing into South Dakota right now that's what gave us all of the wind this afternoon and evening also a few light returns of some light rain and or snow shower just a couple of sprinkles that's about it um, saw a couple, just literally a couple of raindrops in North Bismarck earlier this evening. Otherwise, that's about all the precip we had. Wind remains out of the north between 10 and 20 miles per hour with gusts near 30 and closer to 40 across the Red River Valley. Our temperatures do remain at or above freezing, mostly in the low to mid 30s, but it is going to be a bit on the chilly side tonight. Clouds continue and we will be falling down into the teens and low 20s with decreasing wind. I'll have your complete weekend forecast in just a bit. Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos proposed cutting federal funding for the Special Olympics. The president has since overturned that proposal and authorized the funding. John Salling talked to Special Olympics North Dakota to see how that funding helps them. These people are getting an opportunity to participate in sports like anyone else even compete in global events like Jan Moser of Mandan, who brought home three medals from the Special Olympics World Games earlier this month. But I would say there's, there's even a higher level of excitement because um, a lot of things uh, for those without int intellectual disabilities may be taken for granted, and this is an opportunity that is provided to those folks that uh, um, uh, it just brings a lot of joy. In North Dakota, federal grants are used to expand services into schools. One of the programs they're expanding allows athletes with and without disabilities to compete together for their school. Uh, they're able to participate hand in hand, and that not only provides that ec extra level of um, opportunity for them, but it helps to build that inclusion um, and help to get rid of the stigma that, that may surround those with intellectual disabilities. According to President Kathy Meager, Special Olympics ND had us a budget of about a million dollars that mostly comes from fundraising and donations. From Bismarck, I'm John Salling for your News Leader. To donate or volunteer for the organization, you can check out their website at specialolympicsnd.org. The national opioid epidemic has reached new heights and states are fighting back through the court system. Drug maker Purdue Pharma just agreed to pay $270 million to settle a lawsuit brought by the Oklahoma Attorney General. New York opened a new lawsuit against the company and its owners, the Sackler family, as well as five other companies and four distributors. Now nearly 40 states have sued opioid drug makers. And North Dakota is one of those states. Attorney General Wayne Stengem says they're continuing their suit against Purdue Pharma. The company considered bankruptcy after more than 1,000 suits were filed against them. Purdue has made $35 billion from the drug OxyContin, which many suits allege started the opioid epidemic. I think they're responsible for is causing a crisis that has resulted in addiction of our citizens, 
overdose fatalities, and I think they are responsible to come in and give us the resources that we need to treat these addictions. Stengem says Purdue is fighting them in discovery, but he's pressing on and intends to do everything he can to hold them accountable. Well, there may be a new pill on the market. The hormonal birth control pill is made just for men, and it passed its initial safety tests. Future tests will determine its effectiveness before it is actually released. And scientists at the Georgia Institute of Technology are also trying to develop birth control jewelry for women, saying they could be used like the patch. No human trials have been conducted yet. Well, a bill to take parental rights away from someone who was convicted of or has pleaded guilty to sexual assault and it resulted in the birth of a child has made it to the House. But a proposed amendment wouldn't allow the barring of rights if the convicted rapist is married to the victim, which even sponsors of the bill were at odds about. You'd be dealing with an intact family at that point. So I think what the committee was thinking was that the courts should not disrupt a family where two people, for whatever reason, have decided to remain married. It gives, it gives the impression that rape within a marriage isn't rape. Baki says the original language would allow federal violence against women funding, which she's concerned the amendment will block. The state Senate has approved a bill to ban the most commonly used procedure in second trimester abortions, known as dilation and evacuation or dismemberment abortions. Abortion rights groups say it unconstitutionally interferes with private medical decisions. It will only go into effect when its enforcement is allowed federally, a change the House still has to approve. Governor Burgum has not indicated if he will sign it. And the House passed a bill to exempt lawmakers' communications with public employees. Author Senator Judy Lee says it's clarifying what should already be understood. But a, lo a lawyer who represents media outlets says communications should be open. And the House unanimously defeated a Senate resolution to make it more difficult for citizen-led initiatives that amend the state constitution. The deadline to pass the Equal Rights Amendment to the U.S. Constitution expired back in 1979. Despite the long past deadline, some states have indicated a willingness to support the ERA and want to bring it back, while others have withdrawn their support. And that's a move the North Dakota legislature is considering. Republican Representative Chuck Damshin, a lead sponsor, says the resolution is not anti-woman or anti-women's rights because everyone is equal under the Constitution already. And two hotly contested gun bills are heading to Governor Burgum's desk. The Senate approved a bill allowing school districts to designate an armed first responder at schools. Districts' plans must be approved by law enforcement and the local school boards, and they can withdraw at any time. Supporters say it's focused on rural schools where law enforcement response is slower. Education groups have opposed, citing student safety, potential lawsuits, and higher insurance costs. Senators also passed a bill banning gun buyback programs, subsidized by taxpayers. Supporters saying they do nothing to increase public safety and only threaten gun rights. Nuclear security was top of mind for Senator Kevin Kramer during the Senate Armed Services Committee hearing on atomic energy defense programs yesterday. He questioned U.S. energy officials about nuclear warhead modernization funding, saying it's something of great importance to North Dakota. That mine that really are depending on getting the, the new warheads uh, on schedule so that we can continue to provide the strategic deterrence that our country and our allies need and, and depend on. Under Secretary Gordon Haggerty said things are on cost, on schedule, and aligned with the Department of Defense. But Energy Secretary Rick Perry made it clear that efforts to denuclearize North Korea could affect current funding. In the meantime, Senator John Hoven met with Air Force Chief of Staff General Goldfink about North Dakota's defense priorities. They touched on updating nuclear forces, including the missiles for Minot Air Force Base, as well as the unmanned aerial systems and the intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance mission at Grand Forks Air Force Base. General Goldfink agreed to visit Grand Forks to review the mission and see firsthand the UAS capabilities that are so vital to our national defense. And North Dakota's wide open spaces are perfect for drone technology. Skyscopes uses their drones to collect data for oil and gas companies, making Minot a prime location. And Skyscopes continues to grow. They recently moved into a larger facility near Minot's industrial park. They've been able to recruit some of the best drone pilots in the country. 
And you can read between the lines when, when you speak with them and, and when you can see the, the things that they've gone out and, uh, and done in terms of continuing education and in terms of the mission experience that they have. The company first started in Fargo but moved to the Magic City in 2018. And after more than a decade of review, the Keystone XL pipeline can finally move forward. Senator John Hoven and Montana Senator Steve Daines have been pushing the project. And today, President Trump signed a presidential permit advancing construction. Hoven says it's not only about energy, but also about jobs and economic growth. While Daines said it's a big win for Montana that will create roughly 800 construction jobs and spur millions in revenue for Montana's rural communities and schools. Well, an alarming issue of pipelines came up at the Powering the Grid event in Washington today. Energy Secretary Rick Perry said he's worried about major weather events, citing the storm and flooding here in the Midwest, then said there's a startling situation elsewhere. An adversary of the United States has placed a virus upon some control systems and, and electrical generation in the Northeast. And there is a physical attack on a gas pipeline. And this says lawmakers are concerned about the White House approving the sharing of nuclear energy information with Saudi Arabia. Perry defended the action, saying it's better we partner with them than Russia or China, and said we wouldn't enter into such an agreement without taking necessary precautions first. Well, Emma dazzled us yesterday, and after the break, we'll meet another Gabber star. And we're looking at decent weather over the weekend, but there are going to be a few changes in store. I'll have your forecast in just a minute. Sanford's Great American Bike Race mobilizes the entire community to raise money for kids with disabilities. And each year there are two Gabber stars. And Will Moore Elementary in Bismarck is getting behind their star. Andrew Horn shows us how little kids are making a big impact. <laughs> These first grade students at Wilmore Elementary spent all week dressing up and raising money for Sanford's Great American Bike Race and their favorite Grinch. Once they heard we were having a team for Frederick and he was the star this year, they were on it right away. Frederick White was born with cerebral palsy and one of his favorite movie characters is the Grinch. He wanted a Grinch theme for this year's race. Even in March, his school had the Christmas spirit. Frederick is amazing. He's so sweet and kind to all his friends. Everybody just loves Frederick and he's such a hard worker. Frederick, Frederick, Frederick. Now it was their time to work hard for him. In four days, the school and staff raised $300. The kids could dress up and do different activities and bring a quarter to donate for him. And then all the staff wore jeans and then they did a donation as well. This is just incredible to uh, bring tears to my eyes every year. Sorry. Just seeing how our community comes together to celebrate these kids with disabilities. And like the Grinch, every student left the gym with a heart. In Bismarck, I'm Andrew Horn for your News Leader. The race starts on April 27th this year. And if you'd like to donate or volunteer, visit gabber.sanfordhealth.org. And the Ruth Myers Hospitality House has hired Lutheran Social Services to manage its property and is shifting its focus. Jess Thomason, CEO of LSS of North Dakota, says what was once used as transitional housing will now become an income-based affordable housing community that may change its name to Porter Place Apartments. Ruth Myers is not taking new referrals for its transitional program, but new applicants can contact them or LSS. Current employees will also probably need to reapply. Well, money was raised for Missouri Slope Lutheran Care Center's foundation with a long drive tournament. More than 20 teams competed at golf, etc. today to see who had the highest total yardage to win the Hillview Cup. This is the second year they went with an alternative to the traditional golf tournament. The money raised will be used for expensive therapy equipment for residents, scholarships for nursing students, and more. Well, it's been the perfect spring weather for golfing, Henry. Yeah, most definitely, except for this afternoon we had... Yeah, a bit of wind. That's still continuing for right now, but it will gradually let up. But some of the highest wind gusts, 39 in Williston. That was your max wind gust for today. Oh, mostly in the 30s. A few places did reach that 40 mark in and around the Grand Forks area. North wind is going to continue tonight. 
It's going to remain a bit breezy, especially until midnight. But after midnight, notice how things slowly led up. So instead of 15 to 20 mile per hour wind by 3 a.m. Central Time, we're talking about more like 10 to 15. And then as we get into the sun, when it get close to sunrise, our wind will be letting up. Still a bit of a breeze across the eastern region, but I'm not expecting um, too much wind for tomorrow. The cold front is already pushed through. It moves out of here and high pressure takes control of our weather for the weekend to start out. Things are going to be looking pretty good. A bit on the cooler side, not unseasonably cool, but still cooler than what we've had over the past few days and we're going to have sunshine. So the weather for the weekend is looking nice, but with the warming conditions, uh, the National Weather Service has extended that aerial flood advisory for South Central North Dakota through Monday afternoon. So like we're already doing, we will still be having that chance of some aerial flooding due to all of that snow melt. As of right now, here's the cold front currently near the North and South Dakota state line. Zooming in a little closer, we've got the clouds and a few returns of some light rain or snow showers. There were only like a few from what I experienced earlier in North Bismarck. Just I just saw three drops and that was about it. So that's about all we're going to get as far as precipitation is concerned and that will gradually decrease later tonight. But for now, our temperatures are mostly in the 30s. We're still above freezing, but our temperatures Temperatures will quickly fall later tonight. Here's your north wind continuing between 10 to 20 miles per hour with a few gusts near 30. But for tomorrow, we will be looking at lighter wind. In fact, mostly out of the west, anywhere between 5 to 15 miles per hour. By the lunchtime hour, we should be just a few degrees above freezing. But as we continue to the afternoon, that's where we'll be topping out in the 40s, lower 40s for the central region mid to upper 40s across the far west and the James River Valley looking at mostly 30. So for tonight, the clouds continue, the wind, however, letting up, becoming averaging around 5 to 15 miles per hour. Morning lows, however, are going to be in the upper teens and lower 20s. 40s for tomorrow with that west wind, 5 to 15. Lots of sunshine for your weekend and then a bit warmer for Sunday. So the weekend is looking great. Sunday mild, we're back into the 50s and we're looking at some nice conditions even into the next work week. Limited rain chances, but there will be a chance of some rain and or snow showers Wednesday and Thursday, only 30 to 40 percent, but no major precipitation is in the forecast. And in a way that is good news because we don't want too much precip, especially with all of the melting and flooding going on. Thanks, Henry. Well, we may have gotten a preview of the 2020 campaign, and it looks like it's going to be fierce. Details next. Stanford's Great American Bike Race mobilizes the entire community to raise money for kids with disabilities. And each year there are two Gabber stars, and Will Moore Elementary in Bismarck is getting behind their star. Andrew Horn shows us how little kids are making a big impact. <laughs> These first grade students at Wilmore Elementary spent all week dressing up and raising money for Sanford's Great American Bike Race and their favorite Grinch. So once they heard we were having a team for Frederick and he was the star this year, they were on it right away. Frederick White was born with cerebral palsy and one of his favorite movie characters is the Grinch. He wanted a Grinch theme for this year's race. Even in March, his school had the Christmas spirit. Frederick is amazing. He's so sweet and kind to all his friends. Everybody just loves Frederick and he's such a hard worker. Frederick, Frederick, Frederick. Now it was their time to work hard for him. In four days, the school and staff raised $300. The kids could dress up and do different activities and bring a quarter to donate for him. And then all the staff wore jeans and then they did a donation as well. This is just incredible to uh, bring tears to my eyes every year. Sorry. Just seeing how our community comes together to celebrate these kids with disabilities. And like the Grinch, every student left the gym with a heart. In Bismarck, I'm Andrew Horn for your news leader. The race starts on April 27th this year. And if you'd like to donate or volunteer, visit gabber.sanfordhealth.org. 
And the Ruth Myers Hospitality House has hired Lutheran Social Services to manage its property and is shifting its focus. Jess Thomason, CEO of LSS of North Dakota, says what was once used as transitional housing will now become an income-based affordable housing community that may change its name to Porter Place Apartments. Ruth Myers is not taking new referrals for its transitional program, but new applicants can contact them or LSS. Current employees will also probably need to reapply. Well, money was raised for Missouri Slope Lutheran Care Center's foundation with a long drive tournament. More than 20 teams competed at golf, etc. today to see who had the highest total yardage to win the Hillview Cup. This is the second year they went with an alternative to the traditional golf tournament. The money raised will be used for expensive therapy equipment for residents, scholarships for nursing students, and more. Well, it's been the perfect spring weather for golfing, Henry. Yeah, most definitely, except for this afternoon we had... Yeah, a bit of wind. That's still continuing for right now, but it will gradually let up. But some of the highest wind gusts, 39 in Williston. That was your max wind gust for today. Oh, mostly in the 30s. A few places did reach that 40 mark in and around the Grand Forks area. North wind is going to continue tonight. It's going to remain a bit breezy, especially until midnight. But after midnight, notice how things slowly led up. So instead of 15 to 20 mile per hour wind by 3 a.m. Central Time, we're talking about more like 10 to 15. And then as we get into the sun, when it get close to sunrise, our wind will be letting up. Still a bit of a breeze across the eastern region, but I'm not expecting um, too much wind for tomorrow. The cold front is already pushed through. It moves out of here and high pressure takes control of our weather for the weekend to start out. Things are going to be looking pretty good. A bit on the cooler side, not unseasonably cool, but still cooler than what we've had over the past few days and we're going to have sunshine. So the weather for the weekend is looking nice, but with the warming conditions, uh, the National Weather Service has extended that aerial flood advisory for South Central North Dakota through Monday afternoon. So like we're already doing, we will still be having that chance of some aerial flooding due to all of that snow melt. As of right now, here's the cold front currently near the North and South Dakota state line. Zooming in a little closer, we've got the clouds and a few returns of some light rain or snow showers. There were only like a few from what I experienced earlier in North Bismarck. Just I just saw three drops and that was about it. So that's about all we're going to get as far as precipitation is concerned and that will gradually decrease later tonight. But for now, our temperatures are mostly in the 30s. We're still above freezing, but our temperatures will quickly fall later tonight. Here's your north wind continuing between 10 to 20 miles per hour with a few gusts near 30. But for tomorrow, we will be looking at lighter wind. In fact, mostly out of the west, anywhere between 5 to 15 miles per hour. By the lunchtime hour, we should be just a few degrees above freezing, but as we continue to the afternoon, that's where we'll be topping out in the 40s, lower 40s for the central region mid to upper 40s across the far west and the James River Valley looking at mostly 30. So for tonight, the clouds continue, the wind, however, letting up, becoming averaging around 5 to 15 miles per hour. Morning lows, however, are going to be in the upper teens and lower 20s. 40s for tomorrow with that west wind, 5 to 15. Lots of sunshine for your weekend and then a bit warmer for Sunday. So the weekend is looking great. Sunday mild, we're back into the 50s and we're looking at some nice conditions even into the next work week. Limited rain chances, but there will be a chance of some rain and or snow showers Wednesday and Thursday, only 30 to 40 percent, but no major precipitation is in the forecast. And in a way, that is good news because we don't want too much precip, especially with all of the melting and flooding going on. Thanks, Henry. Well, you may have gotten a preview of the 2020 campaign, and it looks like it's going to be fierce. Details next. President Trump is using the results of the Mueller probe to bash Democrats. At a massive rally last night in Michigan, he went after some of his fiercest critics by name. Doug Lozada reports it may be a preview of what's to come on the campaign trail. Basking in the applause and raising his fists, President Trump was hitting campaign stride last night in Michigan and wielding the just-completed Mueller report as a weapon. The collusion delusion is over. And with a massive crowd, more than 10,000 people, the president used, let's say, colorful language to describe Democrats who are pushing to continue the investigation. The Democrats have to now decide whether they will continue defrauding the public with ridiculous 
In particular, the president had his eyes on Democrats like House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff, who sparred with his Republican colleagues who want him to step down as chairman because of his repeated claims that there was evidence of Trump campaign collusion with Russia, something the Robert Mueller investigation reportedly didn't find. And Schiff stands by his claims. I think it's immoral. I think it's unethical. I think it's unpatriotic. And yes, I think it's corrupt. We have no faith in your ability to discharge your duties in a manner consistent with your constitutional responsibility and urge your immediate resignation as chairman of the committee. But Schiff has the support of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who chided Republicans over the issue of releasing the full Mueller report and not just a summary. I think they're just scaredy cats. They just don't know what to do, so they have to make an attack. Attorney General Barr is set to release a redacted copy of the nearly 400-page Mueller report in April and is open to testifying in May. Well, law enforcement is vital to communities across the nation, and there seems to be a shortage in Indian country. During a Senate hearing this week, Senator John Hoven pushed for additional federal law enforcement, particularly for a new Bureau of Indian Affairs training center in North Dakota. If you can recruit somebody from your geographic region, not only are you more, more likely to, you know, uh, convince them to go into law enforcement, but they're more likely to come and stay. He secured commitment from David Bernhardt, the president's nominee for Secretary of the Interior, to help make this a reality. And he said they can probably get some justice money involved in the effort, too. Well, Bismarck police officer is under investigation for entering a home without a warrant. Police Chief Dan Drejovich says officers were looking for three runaways from a group home. The officer went to the apartment of one of the boy's mothers to see if anyone was home. He says the officer stepped inside and was immediately confronted by the tenant. Consequences could range from verbal counseling to reprimand. Two of the runaways have been found. Well, these vets got to come home 46 years ago, and today we honor them. 46 years ago today, America's military involvement in the Vietnam War ended, so Governor Burgum declared it Vietnam Veterans Day. Of the more than 15,000 North Dakotans that served in the war, 198 never returned. Veteran Freddie Rios from Bismarck served three tours there and says it was quite the war. More than 100 people gathered at the Capitol to remember the fallen and honor the vets. Well, what's our weekend forecast looking like here, Henry? Looking pretty good. It's going to be a little cool tomorrow, but nothing we can't handle. Saturday morning, we'll be starting out in the teens and 20s. A lot less wind after midnight. Uh, west wind for tomorrow, 5 to 15. Temperatures will be in the low to mid 40s. 50s return on Sunday, and there will be a slight chance of a few showers Wednesday and Thursday. The weekend looks pretty darn good, Henry. It sure does. <laughs> All right, thanks so much, and we'll see you on Monday.